Hey guys, thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. If you guys like this content, please subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on so you don't miss the video. Um, I would also appreciate it if you follow me on Twitter and check out my Telegram group, which you can find in the description below. And finally, if you like to if you would like to support the channel, you can also find that in the description below. Um, anyways, what we're going to be going over in this video are the minimum, maximum, and average price of the top 12 cryptocurrencies by market cap since their inception. And the point of doing this um, is more or less just derivative work from what I did yesterday where I showed the minimum, maximum, and average price of Bitcoin. And then we use the, the, the relative difference between the minimum and maximum on an annualized time frame to you know, investigate when the price of Bitcoin might ultimately stabilize. So um, I wanted to do the same thing, but for the top 12 cryptocurrencies by market cap, excluding Tether, since it's a stable coin. So we're going to be looking at, you can see Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Bitcoin Cash, EOS, Litecoin, BNB, BSV, Cardano, XLM, XTZ, and TRX. So I'm sure many of you guys are very familiar with these coins. Um, if you've been in the cryptocurrency space at all for the last several years, you will have heard of these coins. You'll most likely know um, their communities fairly well. You might have very opinionated views on some of these coins. And the point of this video is to not go over, you know, the, the ins and outs of each coin and to talk about which ones maybe have more merit than others. The point is just to look at the data. What does the data tell us? Um, and, and you guys can use this as a tool to make your own uh, cryptocurrency, you know, investments and how you manage your own portfolio. But... You know, remember any of this data that I'm, I'm, you know, throwing at you guys with any potential theories um, obviously have their own risk associated with them. So let's just go ahead and jump in. So, you know, the first thing we're going to look at here is Bitcoin. And, you know, many of you guys are very, very, very familiar with this graph. And the interesting thing is how, you know, how Bitcoin, you know, quote unquote, dies so many times during its existence. You can see... Um, over here, you know, there were people screaming it was dead when the maximum value in 2011 um, uh, dwarfed the minimum value in, say, 2012. Similar thing in 2013 to 2014. Similar thing in 2018 to 2019. But I've said in previous videos, you don't judge an asset by, you know, what it's done since dumb money is coming into the market. When your grandmother is buying Bitcoin, you don't want to weigh how well it's doing in the future based off such a irrational time. It's like you're, you're trying to make a rational decision about something and a rational, um, uh, you're trying to make a rational uh, conclusion about something from using a irrational um, point, uh, standpoint um, from when the, the market was in a, in a mania phase. So, you know, clearly looking at the, the yearly minimums of Bitcoin tell a much different story. You know, I mean, it, it more or less, it's not quite monotonically increasing because you can see it does come down sometimes. But more or less with Bitcoin, you know, it's historically, it has been the earlier you get in, the better. Now, you know, many people will argue that the past does not predict the future. And obviously that's true. But, you know, one of the, one of the tools that a lot of, that you can, you know, really rely on uh, a significant portion of time is, you know, assets that are doing well are more likely to continue doing well than assets that are not doing well. And I've talked about that before. It seems like it's pretty straightforward, um, but, you know, that it, it's, it's, I think, an important thing to hold on to. So remember to um, uh, look at these macro level trends when, when deciding what you're investing in. Um, so, you can see Bitcoin, you know, the average price is obviously going to uh, be somewhat in the middle of the minute max, obviously not, not exactly in the middle, depending on how much time um, the price spent at each, at each level. But, you know, Bitcoin more or less, you know, it has this trend where, it, you know, it kind of comes up and then it more or less levels out before going up again, leveling out, going up again, leveling out, continuing this, I'll, you know, I'll leave it to you to think, you know, are we going to... We're going to have another data point of leveling out, which I think is probably likely. Um, I think, you know, 2020 is, you know, I, I don't think it's going to be a, a significant year of, um, 
uh, a mania phase or anything like that. Um, I feel like it's very possible we um, are somewhat around this area. But again, I, I really could be wrong on that. Um, now, one of the interesting things about these graphs is if you just briefly look at all of them, I mean, Ethereum looks very similar to the Bitcoin um, graph just, you know, earlier on. Um, you can see it's, it came up very rapidly, and then we're, we're in the year of, um, we're kind of at a low point, in a sense. Um, but remember, you know, these low points, while the market is, is filled at this point with people screaming, um, you know, everything's going to zero, and, and things like that, um, you have to remember that that same market sentiment has existed um, since the inception of, of the cryptocurrency asset class. Uh, nothing, nothing is new in that, in that standpoint, and a lot of times people will just say alts are dead, um, and, and typically what happens is they're dead until they're not dead, and then the market sentiment will change on a dime. You know, everyone that was originally calling for, you know, the prices to go to zero are now making these outrageous price predictions with no, you know, data to support what they're, what they think. They'll just, they'll just post what, you know, some astronomical number and, and see what the community says about it. So, in, in this channel, you know, we really like to keep a level head. We just look, like to look at what the data tells us. So, you know, continuing, continuing this, um, uh, if we were to continue to emulate Bitcoin, if Ethereum were to continue to emulate Bitcoin, and let's suppose, I mean, let's just suppose like this is where we are on, on the Bitcoin chart. Um, then, you know, it's not that hard to imagine that Ethereum... Um, might see some significant gains in the coming years, and then investing, potentially investing now, um, is a you know could be a very um, promising time to invest because you remember you know the the, the what does the saying go? It's you know a bull market can make you uh, make you some money, but a bear market can make you rich. When you invest in the market, when it's down, you really can get the um, you know, the most amount of coins for your dollar. And, you know, it's funny because, um, you know, when the market is down like this, people will say, um, you know, you're, you're crazy for investing. I have no idea why you would invest in, in these assets. But if you, if you really believe in, in, you know, the future of cryptocurrency, you know, it, it remains to be seen if any of the top 12 now will be the top 12 in 10 years. But, you know, it, it's very likely that, you know, once another bull market, if and when it does occur, the same people that were calling you crazy will think you're likely a genius for investing. And I would like to argue that we're still very early on um, in this, uh, in the, the cryptocurrency asset class, because if you just think about it, I mean, how many of your friends and family know about crypto, want, want to talk about it? Or, you know, there's really not that many people, but the evidence shows that, you know, the number of, say, Bitcoin wallets and all sorts of other wallets are growing pretty steadily throughout the years, and adoption is occurring. It's just very slow adoption. Um, and you know, remember when 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 things are adopted, they don't happen overnight. Think about like I think I've told this analogy before, like self-driving cars. Um, you know, people expect to just wake up one day and every car on the street is self-driving. That's not true. What happens is is features are slowly integrated into self-driving cars, for instance, like, say, automatic parallel parking um, and, and various other features, like lane assist. These things get slowly integrated in until one day we wake up in 10 years and then <clears throat> we have self-driving cars everywhere. So the same thing, you know, is likely, you know, in my opinion, is likely going to happen with cryptocurrency. It's going to be one of those things where it slowly gets uh, builds its way into our lives until one day the, the world population is going to have a hard time imagining what it was like before cryptocurrencies. So sorry for that um, tangent, but I just kind of wanted to talk about that a little bit. Um, but you know, you can see here, and, and I, I, I removed the standard deviations on these just because I, I felt like it added a lot of noise. If you guys want to see those, I can, I, can, I can certainly upload those so that you can see. But you know, know obviously that during the, the bull markets, the standard deviations on these averages are, are astronomical and sometimes they're even greater than the average value itself. So I would say in terms of looking at, um, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum, I mean, I think they both look very promising um, just in terms of looking at patterns and hoping that history is going to repeat itself. Um, not that it will. 
Now, XRP is a kind of a different story. So you can see with XRP, it tends to not do as much for a longer period of time, and then it explodes, you know? And I've showed this, I've showed the XRP graph before, um, and I, I think, honestly, I think XRP is one of the easier cryptocurrencies to trade because with respect to Bitcoin, it more or less does the same thing over and over and over. It when it when I think I you know I, I I wrote a report on this. If you just go to intothecryptoverse.com and look up uh, ripples in time, you'll find it. But I, I think more or less when the ratio of XRP to Bitcoin is 10 to the minus four, you want to start dollar cost averaging your way out. And when it's 10 to the minus five, you want to start dollar cost averaging your way in. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, now, obviously, you don't wait until exactly 10 to the minus 4 and exactly to 10 to the minus 5 to start dollar cost averaging. You have to decide exactly when that's going to be because it's hard to say at what point will it see a trend reversal. But one of the lessons you can take from it is that when XRP gets to 10 to the minus 4, if it gets there and you're not dollar cost averaging your way out, then you're probably doing something wrong. And every market cycle, people tend to think that, you know, Bitcoin's going down and that all these other coins are going to take over and, and Bitcoin's going to zero. And so far it hasn't been true. I don't think it's going to be true, at least not for the foreseeable future. Um, if you know, just looking at, at what Bitcoin does, um, you know, the altcoins, when we hit altcoin season, they'll see incredible gains against Bitcoin, but ultimately those runs will peter out and you know, the smart investor, the smart money will be selling at that point when everyone else is saying that Bitcoin's going to zero. That's the time where you want to be selling your altcoins and either putting it into Bitcoin or just putting it into um, stablecoin. So XRP is very different from Ethereum. Note that in the last market cycle, Ethereum um, had, its, had, a, had a huge run up after Bitcoin held the 20 week moving average, which I've showed in previous videos tends to indicate the start of the bull market. And note that we are not holding the 20 week moving average currently. In fact, we popped above the 20 week well above it when we went to 14,000. We came back down to like, you know, 10,000 or so, which is where the 20 week moving average was. And, you know, the market froze and it was like, what's Bitcoin gonna do? And it didn't hold it as support and it dropped below it. So until Bitcoin holds the 20 week moving average as support, I don't think I don't think um, you're going to see a whole lot of movement in the altcoin market. That doesn't mean that you can't see 2x gains or 3x gains, but I'm talking about um, seeing incredible growth from coins like Ethereum. I don't think it's going to happen until Bitcoin holds a 20-week moving average. Now, you know, Bitcoin had had quite a year. I mean, it went from 3100, you know, the end of last year, um, all the way up to around 14 grand, and and obviously now it's about 50%. Um, uh, from that. But in order to see growth like that with Ethereum, I think Bitcoin is likely going to need to hold that 20 week moving average. And I have plenty of videos that talk about it. Um, XRP doesn't tend to, it doesn't tend to spike until Bitcoin gets to its previous all time high. So when it, when XRP here, when it spiked um, in 2017, you can see the minimum was, you know, several orders of magnitude below the maximum. In 2017, this corresponded to two things. It corresponded to, um, you know, Bitcoin hitting its previous all-time high, which then caused a huge bull market for XRP. And then it also corresponded with Bitcoin reaching the end of its bull market. And then, you know, people taking a lot of their Bitcoin profits and throwing it into altcoins to try to see a, a quick return on your investment and then to get out. So that's the key thing. When Bitcoin hits the end of its, its bull run, you know, you you might have a window where you can see some gains in other coins, but you have to remember that, you know, the people that are just saying, oh, just throw $10,000 in this or $1,000 in that and wait a year and you'll be at 100x. It's most likely not true. When Bitcoin's been at a long, when it's been on a long run um, and, and people are basically just throwing their monopoly money into altcoins, you have to know, um, that it's a short-lived thing and a lot of the altcoins will go maybe 10x with respect to Bitcoin in a week or two, a few weeks. Um, but if you if you don't dollar cost average your way out on that window, then most likely what's going to happen is what happened to many of you guys in, in um, 2018, 
what happened to many people in 2014. Um, so you need to you need to you know figure out what your strategy is now, and um, make sure you stick to it. Don't get too greedy because it likely will not work out. Um, so that covers these three. Now let's look at Bitcoin Cash. So one of the issues here with Bitcoin Cash um, is that it hasn't really been around long enough to make any any huge um, uh, interpretations from the data. And some of you guys might be noting, well, I mean, this looks like a bad trend. Um, just looking at this, but there's a caveat. I'm sure many of you guys know what the caveat is. Bitcoin Cash was introduced at the you know near near the end of 2017, um, and therefore the average price during that time is very high because the the cryptocurrency market as a whole was experiencing a bull run. So the average price during that like you know that couple two or three month window. Is very high, so it, it kind of skews the results for for um, Bitcoin Cash. If it had been introduced, say, in the beginning of 2017, if the fork had occurred, say, six months earlier, then this data point up here would easily be down here, uh, or sorry, not the max, but the average um, and and um, the minimum would easily be pulled down, and it would tell a completely different story. You know, it might look something like this, where it, you know it goes up and then down, and then hopefully in the future it's going to um, make a big move up to the next level so you could imagine it, it doing something similar um, that's not to say that it will but it's just to say you know if you're gonna look at data you need to understand like the story behind it um, and and try to interpret it appropriately so really what you might want to do is just exclude this 2017 data point just because it's based on on very little data compared to some of the other coins um, and just look to see 2018 and 2019, and if you look between 2018 and 2019, and look at the minimum price, then it is going up. And, uh, you know, it's it's going up at a pretty um, uh, healthy slope here. I mean, you can see it's not that dissimilar from other other coins um, where, their, where their minimums are going up on a on an annualized basis. So um, uh, we have EOS, uh, which... Um, and, and note that these all of these log all these scales here are logarithmic, but the axes limits um, change on each one. Just so I can zoom in on on each coin. <coughs> um, so EOS actually, um, you know, in, in terms of a minimum, I mean, 2017, 2018, 2019. I mean, you, you're just seeing continued growth um, with EOS in terms of the minimum. And again, you should really be judging it based off its minimum or at least its average but not its max. Don't look at the max. Um, <clears throat> so for me, I mean, you know, EOS is, um, in terms of a minimum price, it's it's definitely showing, um, uh, you know, so, I mean, obviously it's, it's showing a good ROI. That's not to say what it'll do in the future, but, you know, you can obviously make your own um, decisions about uh, what you want to invest in. Now, Litecoin, <laughs> um, you know, it, it is, it is, it's obviously very different from Bitcoin, and it's obviously very different from Ethereum. But it's very similar to XRP. Now, these are correlations you need to make in your head, and you need to, you need to have them in the back of your mind, because you don't want to forget about these things when the time comes. If and when the time comes, you need to know which coins, um, you know, what seasons each coins are in, because people will say alt season, alt coin season, but, you know, it's not entirely true. You know, certain coins... Um, react differently um, compared to what Bitcoin's doing. As I mentioned, Ethereum, at least in the last cycle, um, really saw a huge gain once Bitcoin held the 20-week moving average. That doesn't mean it's going to happen again. It's just something I'm noting. XRP and Litecoin didn't go up until until Bitcoin hit previous all-time high. And you can see that in the fact that they look very similar to one another. Um, now, a very interesting one is is Binance Coin. So BNB, um, one of the one of the crazy things about about this coin is that if you just look at um, its maximum value year over year, so far monotonically increasing. Average price monotonically increasing. Minimum price monotonically increasing. What does that mean? We're not decreasing at all on an annualized basis. Um, arguably, this is this is a a pretty I mean we've seen this in the market right I mean if if, if you think of cryptocurrency exchanges <clears throat> obviously one of the first ones that comes to mind 
is Binance because of its incredible, um, uh, you know, it, how, how much of the market share it's taken over in terms of um, cryptocurrency trading. Um, and, and, and what's al what's also remarkable is how um, it didn't it didn't take, you know, four to six years for Binance coin to get back to its previous all time high. It, you know, it just did it in one or two years. Um, and, you know, you could say it's, it has a really good, it has an interesting use case, you know, in the fact that if you're trading on Binance, you can reduce your trading fees just by um, having having their native coin in your portfolio, which if you're a, if you're a, a day trader, um, can significantly um, uh, increase your, your profits. Um, uh, so, uh, BSV, you know, there's really not a whole lot of data. We just have um, two years here, 2018, 2019. Obviously, they're all in, in uptrends. Note that these uptrends are, I mean, this scale um, is a lot different than these over here, going from, say, 10 to the minus 2 to 10 to the 2. I mean, this is just going from, like, you know, um, a, few, a few up to 240. So there's really not a huge difference between these prices. Um, and, you know, any person will tell you that, you know, two data points does not make a trend. Um, and so, I mean, there's really not a whole lot to say with it. Um, so, uh, Cardano, um, you know, this was, you know, Cardano was one of those ones that, um, you know, if you, if you were following it back in, in 2017, um, it, it really went through the roof. It, you know, I, it went from, I, I remember watching it very closely, it went from like two cents to 13 cents, like like that. And then a few days later, it went from like 13 cents to like, I think like 39 cents. Um, obviously my memory might be a little bit off, but it was something like that. So it went from like two, two cents to like 13 cents, so you saw 5x. And then it went from 13 cents to like 39 cents a few days later. So that was like another 3x. And then a few days after that, it went up to like 60 or 70 cents, I think. And then before long, it was at like a buck 30. Um, and what's crazy about it was was that, at, I mean, at the time, they were they were pretty far away from you know even you know launching launching Shelly, um, which is their main net. Um, and uh, so I mean, obviously, it was it was fueled by a lot of speculation. Um, you know, it kind of begs the question, uh, you know, given how much it went up just by speculating, you know, it, it would, it would really be nice, um, you know, with Cardano, uh, seeing, I mean, recently, if you're not familiar with it, um, they recently have, you know, a snapshot for it, their incentivized test snap, um, which basically is, allows users to, um, receive real, um, ADA for their, um, by, by, by basically, um, staking, staking their coins. So, um, assuming the test net goes well, and then assuming they launch Shelly, which is, you know, their main net and, and that goes well, um, it'll, you know, it'll be very interesting to see what happens. Um, in a sense, Cardano is a, is a hedge against Ethereum because, you know, it's essentially trying to create this platform where, um, people, you know, can, can easily build on top of it. Um, and in order to do this, you know, they spend a ton of time coding and, um, you know, this, this amount of time obviously has, uh, caused some, you know, some people to get a little bit disgruntled, uh, which is fair. And you should also remember though, that in, I am a programmer and in the programming space, uh, you know, things take time. And if you're, if you're trying to build something that's going to, um, uh, really revolutionize the space, it's going to take time. Now, the caveat with Cardano and obviously what something they're probably racing against is because the, the, the market changes so quickly, you know, you want to, you want to get these things out, um, in a timely manner. So, so that, so that people can start building on top of it. Cause if not, then something else will just swoop in and, and take whatever market share you were going to do. So, you know, I'm not going to say exactly specifically what I think is, is going to happen with Cardano, but I mean, you know, I think there are, um, they are making decent progress in the last couple months and, um, uh, especially with their getting their incentivized test net running. Um, and I know Charles, you know, he does AMAs all the time. So, um, you know, feel free to, feel free to look into that. Um, uh, but you can see that, you know, despite, despite all of this, 
uh, their minimum price um, year over year has been increasing. You know, we were, we were down at like two cents and then three cents and in 2019, um, you know, like three and a half cents or so, which is a far cry from the, the dollar 30 that we saw. And it doesn't mean that it can't get back up here. Um, it just means that, you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens if, if they can, if they can deliver the, the, the main net and, and people start building on, on, on their, on their, um, technology stack, um, you know, then we'll, we'll really see what can happen with it. Um, so Stellar Lumens, XLM, uh, you know, they recently burned a, you know, a significant portion of their supply. Um, and I know many people have, uh, you know, the price hasn't been doing the best recently, but it's, it's also important to remember, um, macro level trends. I mean, it wasn't that long ago where the price was still, you know, a couple orders of magnitude lower than where, than where it is today. Um, so, you know, just keep that in mind. Uh, obviously XLM looks very similar to Litecoin and XRP in, in, in the sense that, um, uh, they really see a, a huge gain once Bitcoin gets back to that uh, previous all-time high. Um, and then quickly, so I, I won't really say a whole lot about this one, um, just because, I mean, we, we still don't really have a whole lot of um, data points. Um, one of the reasons why is because I really only consider this to be two data points. This first data point here in 2017 is similar to uh, Bitcoin Cash. And that it was only taken over a very small time frame in 2017 during the bull market. And so if it had been created, say, earlier in 2017, then the minimum price would be much lower. Um, or the average the average price um, and probably the minimum price would, would be much lower. Um, and so because of that, we really only have two data points, which show the max and the average have decreased, but the minimum has, has seen a slight increase. Again, not enough data to really go on. Um, and then finally, Tron, so TRX, we're, we're, you know, we're looking at, uh, so this is run by um, Justin Sun, who is, I'm sure many of you guys know, he's uh, very well known in the space because he's quite vocal um, about things. Um, but uh, with Tron, you know, again, uh, in 2017, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of data to go off of. You know, it, it was, there, I think, you know, only a few months, uh, two or three months, I think, in 2017, where I actually have data. Um, so, again, this is really only two data points that are reliable. But even so, I mean, the minimum price of Tron has increased um, fair, in a fairly healthy manner. Average price, you know, seems reasonable. Max is also, isn't really that you know, it's not that insane to, to see that. I mean, we've seen that in other places before, um, even with Bitcoin. Um, now, Bitcoin hasn't seen the drop, the the max, like the drop from this max to this max. It hasn't seen quite that level of volatility. You can see that year over year, the max does not drop below um, the max from, say, the previous year. Whereas for, for Tron, it has, but again, 2017, um, was launched during the bull run, so it's hard to it's hard to really um, take too much of that into into account. So I hope this has been useful. I'm going to show you another chart really quick, which is the same data, but everything's on the same scale. That way you can just get a, a feel for um, uh, you know where things where things are um, in in terms of relative to one another. Obviously, you know I could have plotted this by market cap, which you know. Fine, I get it, it makes sense. Um, but let's just look at the price. Obviously price is irrelevant. If, if you're always worried about the price, it's always about percent gains in the price, not just the price. If you buy, if you spend $1,000 on something that's one cent and it goes to 10 cent, you've, you know, you've profited the same as if you bought something at a dollar and it goes to 10, to 10, to $10. Um, there's no difference. So you just wanna look at the percent gains and it's easy to tell in this logarithmic scale. Um, so again, remember Bitcoin Cash, um, and, and some of these others only have realistically two data points to look at. So I, I would primarily draw your attention to the ones that have more data because you can, I feel like you can take more away from them. Uh, and, and the primary things to take away 
are, are looking at Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Litecoin, um, and Stellar Lumens in terms of how they behave with respect to the market cycle. Um, obviously, this outlier of Binance Coin, which has seen uh, increases in the max every single year um, for three years straight, also increases in the average and increases in the minimum for three years straight. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think everything else is pretty much self-explanatory. I hope this has kind of covered some of my thoughts on, on some of these coins. Um, I know many of you guys asked me to cover, you know, a hundred, I get, I probably get 20 requests a day, um, to cover something. I'll, I'll make a video and then someone's response will just be, can you do this for this other coin? Um, and I've tried to, I've tried to cover those as much as possible, but, you know, there are thousands of coins, so I cannot cover all of them. But I do hope this video has proven useful to you guys. Um, if you guys like this content, remember to subscribe to the channel, uh, like the video, turn your notifications on, and if you want to support the channel, you can find information about that in the description below. Until next time, guys. Bye.